Hello and once again welcome to this vlog and pull up a chair to the fireside of Critical Chat and I'd like to front load this edition with a heartfelt plea for you to subscribe to this channel. And don't be one of those people with an attitude problem who sort of imply that subscribing is something that they quote unquote might not want to do. Don't do that, okay? Hit the subscribe button. This week, film critics and cinephiles have been queuing to pay their respects to Jean-Luc Godard, who has died at the age of 91, the last and the most prominent of the extraordinarily long-lived and productive new wave generation. I myself wrote something for The Guardian in which I said that he had become the cinematic Che Guevara, but as if Che had not been assassinated, but grown old, hiding out in the Bolivian jungle. Less visible, less important, but still capable of masterminding from afar those spectacular acts of armed resistance that reminded you of his revolutionary vocation. People, of course, have been talking about Breathless, Band Apart, Viva Sa Vie, two or three things I know about her, Contempt, Pierre Le Fou, and all the famous movies from Goddard's 1960s golden age with their digressions, offbeat dialogue scenes, non-narrative excursions and jump cuts. But my favourite Goddard film from that period, and favourite Goddard ever, is his Une Femme Mariée, or A Married Woman, a mature yet approachable masterpiece. <laughs> Masha Merrill plays Charlotte, a young married woman having an affair with a handsome actor. It's intensely erotic with a pure freewheeling brilliance, a digressive cine essay and a movie flaneur's wander through Paris. Where else? It has a Warholian interest in the iconography of interviews, celebrity, publicity and a fetish for underwear. My personal theory is that the excitement of new wave filmmaking with all its sexy rule breaking must have felt like the excitement of an extramarital affair. Finnish writer-director Hanna Bergholm makes her feature debut this week with Hatching, a bizarre and richly designed horror satire about family dysfunction, body image and eating disorder, a coming of age into a world of fear. We start with an Instagrammably picture-perfect family of ineffable blondness. Tinja, played by Siri Solalina, is a shy teenager who is a gymnastics competitor driven super hard by her icily ambitious mother, played by Sofia Hakela. And Tinja's mum shoots a daily vlog about her too-good-to-be-true family life entitled Lovely Everyday Life. Berko must surely have considered that as an alternative title for her film. The horror begins when Tinja steals an egg laid by a sinister black bird and the egg hatches into a nightmarish creature which becomes Tinja's secret pet, slowly more morphing into a Mr. Hyde version of her. This hatching coincides with and is also somehow psychically caused by a family crisis. Tinger has accidentally chanced across her mother kissing the handsome handyman and her mother, so far from denying it, privately asks Tinger to keep this a secret from her father and being made complicit in all this is a kind of abuse. Certainly Tinger can hardly process this terrible upheaval at the same time as she is preparing for her demanding championships. It is the symbol of her violent breakdown, her own hatching into the mother's adult world of secrets, delusions and lies. 
The great news this week is that Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown is now revived in cinemas for its 25th anniversary. His impossibly stylish and exciting adaptation of Elmore Leonard's crime thriller Rum Punch, reinvented as a quasi black exploitation homage, featuring a glorious central performance from Pam Greer, whose work is also getting a retrospective at the BFI. She plays Jackie, the tough flight attendant, importing gun running profits into the US in her tote bag, who figures she can outsmart both the cops and the gangsters and keep all the money for herself. What do a stewardess, a gun runner, a bail bondsman, an ex-con, a federal agent and a beach bunny have in common? If you're going to come in on this thing with me, you got to be prepared to go all the way. They're all chasing a half million in cash. Samuel L. Jackson is brilliant as gun runner Ordell Robbie, whose grisly criminal court includes ex-cellmate Louis Gara, played by Robert De Niro, and space cadet girlfriend Melanie, Bridget Fonda. And law enforcement takes the form of Michael Keaton, with whom Jackie is pretending to work undercover. But she finds herself encountering the equally tough, self-deprecating and gallant Max Cherry, a lovely performance from Robert Forster. He is the bail bondsman who falls deeply in love with Jackie, and at the end, Tarantino gives them both a wonderfully romantic romantic kiss. Jackie Brown, being this director's most conventionally structured and paced work, is often ostentatiously hailed as his best film from people who are, in their hearts, not Tarantino fans. This praise signalling a disapproval of the distinctive and delirious methamphetamine stimuli of Tarantino's other movies, more Godardian movies, the pop culture self-awareness, the comically crazed ultraviolence, the sheen of irony and studied immaturity, and the more unstructured chapter-by-chapter -chapter narrative procedure. Jackie Brown doesn't really do any of that, although there is a very Tarantino-esque sequence in which Ordell, with nothing much else to do all day but hang out and praise firearms, waxes lyrical about a certain kind of assault rifle. Greer and Jackson are both so explosively good in Jackie Brown, so good that it's easy to overlook how great the supporting turns are as well. De Niro gives an excellent performance, a late career gem, in fact, as the rare beta male among his gallery of tough characters. This is a stone-cold liquid nitrogen classic from Tarantino and a magnificent performance from Greer. That's got to be it for now. Please, again, subscribe to this YouTube channel and also please buy my book, the Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. See you next week.